Okay, hello. This is uh, most music talks here uh, in the very first experimental broadcast, webcast, webinar, whatever it's called. Uh, and uh, my friends, Damir Mamovic and Simon Broton from Sarajevo and London. Are... Hi from London. Hi from Sarajevo. And hi from Budapest, which is the third location uh in this uh in this uh well europe-wide broadcast um we'll be we'll try to keep it informal mostly because we don't know however else <laughs> yeah it's quite <laughs> informal <laughs> yeah um and uh it's called most music talks because uh well most which is uh uh, partly Creative Europe co-funded uh, project um, to, to develop the uh, world music market on the Balkans um, started at the very beginning of this year. And as you can imagine, um, we were kind of stuck at the very beginning um, with mm, many of our activities. Uh, had to be postponed what we want to but we want to proceed as much as we can and uh, one of the ways we do it is to well keep connection in between us and with you all of you out there um so most is uh uh has an open call for applications which is out right now and the deadline is approaching uh at the end of this week um so check them out but only after this talk because uh we won't just talk about that because that would be a very boring broadcast if we would discuss deadlines and applications um it doesn't take a webcast to do that um what's more interesting that it's uh the hottest thing from the Balkans right now, I guess, uh, is Damir's new record um, that just came out, what was that, six weeks ago, Damir? Uh, yeah, something like that. It was on the April the 3rd. Oh, yeah, then it's even less. So it's already, less. It, it came out already during the lockdown, which is not a very, it's not very ideal circumstances to promote uh, <laughs> a new record, Sevda or not, uh, in any kind of genres. But uh, but despite all these difficulties, your record, which is, I have to add, is a beautiful one. But I'm a Sevda fan, so. Thank you. Uh, and the Damir fan, so I might be biased. But, uh, um, but it seems to go pretty well. It's number two on the world music charts, Europe. Now it's getting very good reviews. Uh, how do you do that? What's your secret? Share it with everybody else. Well, my, my secret is to, to start a pandemic so people are, have to sit home and listen to music. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, we, we started you know, announcing the, the record and all the people who, who were expecting it fans, journalists, everybody, uh, they asked me at the beginning, you know, when this all started, what's happening? Are you, are you releasing the record? Uh, especially because we already uh, released a single, we had the tour dates aligned and everything was, you know, great and, and happy and shiny. And I was really looking forward. It's my seventh record. And this one was really a big thing for me, for me because I, I put together a completely new project with Greg Cohen and Daria Turkan and Ivana Djuric and with Joe Boyd and Andrea Gertler producing. So really we had something going. So it really, as they say, you know, caught me on, on my on my left foot, you know. I was really I was just about to <clears throat> to board the plane maybe two two, three days before the departure to go to London to do the interviews, uh, to plug the records, uh, to rec the record in radios and everything else, uh, because we had this uh, 1st of May appearance at Barbican St. Luke in London, in, in, then later on in Brighton, in, in Balkan traffic, Klangvokal uh, Dortmund. I mean, we really had some 20 plus beautiful concerts lined up. 
And we had to decide, you know, whether we're going to do it or not, whether we're going to release the record. But uh, we decided to go with it, despite of, you know, a tour being the main, then probably the most important thing about, about for, for the life of, of the record, for the people to, to see the project, to hear the project live. And, uh, but we were in the middle of it. So actually it wasn't, uh, we, we we considered you know canceling it, but you know we, we would really. One thing also we knew that probably a lot of people who did cancel their things will have to do it again in probably what the fall or next year. So it's going to be really a crazy time when it comes. You know when people and and once you start this whole thing when you get this whole thing going, you know, you send your record to reviewers, to magazines, to uh, radio editor, uh, radio journalists, uh, promoters, everyone, you cannot actually come and say, okay, now remember that record we sent you a few weeks ago, don't review it now. <laughs> <You know? clears throat> stop, stop listening to it and pretend in like six months that it's the, and then we just said, Joan and Andrea and I and Rob Koshir, my manager and Ian, uh from 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 ross and we were like you know we 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 were working for this record so much we we believe it's it's a great record and we want people to to listen to it you know and to be honest after it was released uh people all the new fans you know they were really supportive and i'm i'm really proud of that I, I, you know, the first day when it came out, I, I started receiving and I received, I must have received like, I don't know, over 30 screenshots of people, you know, downloading the music, uh, paying for it or streaming it, you know, and they were screenshotting it and sending to me it, it, in, in a way to, to say, you know, we are here, we, we support you. Thank you for doing this. And, and I received a lot of beautiful reactions, both to the record and also to the fact that we decided to do that you know and when, when you believe in, in in what you're doing it's not one-off thing it's not like you know it's not like okay this is the only record i'm going to release ever you know there will be records to to plug it with tours and also the tour for this particular record i hope will happen when when this is all over when this all is over so um at the end it it came out i mean as you said, reviews are really nice, and, and and people are already loving individual songs and the whole record. So that's the most important thing. Yeah, we are <clears throat> we are getting yeah, comments I, I'll online. Put my, I, put, go ahead, Simon. A little bit in. Um, I mean, I'm very pleased that in Songlines this month we've got a really nice feature on 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 the record. Uh, um, Although Damir wasn't able to come to London, Garth Cartwright, Cartwright uh, spoke to him, uh, you know, down the line in Sarajevo. And uh, so, you know, Songlines at least is an example of one of those magazines that was able to push on with its schedule and get the piece out at least in time for the release. But uh, uh, it's very sorry that you know, I'm very sad that Damiers wasn't able to come last week and perform at the Barbican and, and elsewhere. And of course, he had a much bigger. To it's it's a rough time for for musicians. But I have to say, it's a terrific disc. I'm a big fan of Sender, and this is a, a very nice example of it. Um, Damir giving his own very much 21st century take on a very old form. Thank you, Simon. Yeah, and I especially appreciate that my favorite Sevdak song, Amina, is featured uh -huh. <laughs> on the album too. <laughs> yeah, that's my, my total favorite. Uh, but um, Simon, you're probably getting the highest number of recordings to be reviewed in this industry at Songlines. Uh, is there any change in how the artists are approaching you or are they more keen to get reviewed as usual? Because that kind of remains the, the only kind of feedback they are getting when there are no live events or they are more 
taking a break and, and being more passive? What's your experience? Um, Balaj, you're breaking up a lot, at least at my end. So um, I didn't get the, the question exactly, but I, I think it was about um, <laughs> getting albums and views in, in song lines. Um, the song lines offices are closed at the moment. Everyone's working. So when FISDs, um, they are presumably in a big pile at the at the at the offices. Um, so we're we're dealing with everything online. So what we need is online links, press releases, um, SoundCloud links, particularly because it, it's great if one doesn't have to download big files, which takes uh, a long time. So it's really getting information about the disc and then obviously access to the to the digital files. Um, the number of reviews is for sure going to go down in some subsequent issues just because we're receiving less. Um, obviously, quite a lot of people are delaying releases until the situation improves. But uh, uh, the plan is, you know, with lesser pagination, just to, to carry on as best we can. But, but clearly, live music, which is also a big part of, of what we're dealing with, isn't isn't happening. So the new issue, which comes out uh, the, at the end of this week, um, is very much talking about music online and the way different ways in which people are delivering content online. Yeah, um, I just noticed on Facebook that you're also taking tours in in London. Is it kind of a, a replacement for your, you know, regular travels? You're trying to travel around town and discover new places. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, it, 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 it's a, a cliche, of course, that it's rather wonderful being forced to discover the area in which you live. And, you know, so instead of taking trips to remote parts of the globe, I've really enjoyed um, just exploring the parks, the green spaces, the architecture in, in West London, which is where I'm based. In fact, uh, yesterday, I haven't posted this one on Facebook yet, but um, I went to where they filmed part of the Monty Python Silly Walks sketch. Uh, and <laughs> armed with the video, was, was looking at the streets John Cleese is doing his Silly Walks. So uh, um, <laughs> probably tomorrow I, I can post myself and John Cleese sort of alongside each other in in a street that's really just five minutes walk from here. Uh, so I didn't know that history. Of course, Television Centre, as it was, it's no longer occupied by the BBC, but that was only a few streets away. And that's <laughs> why quite a lot of the Monty Python sketch seems to have had shot in the streets around here. This leads us a long way because uh, a John Cleese show has just been cancelled. It was scheduled for next week in Budapest, I guess. So it's not just the music industry that suffers. It's mm, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, Damir, what will you do after, I don't know, this pandemic goes away? What's... What's the, what's the plan? What's the first thing? Can you can you make it up to well all that we've lost with your you know concerts and travels and yeah I mean of course I'll try to uh, I'm working uh, with 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 my manager Rock uh, Koshir on on you know uh, confirming other dates and all the promoters are you know still in luckily enough they're still interested and you know apart from festivals that are if they move the whole festival next year nobody know what will happen and i also hear that some festivals are you know really endangered by this whole thing uh, so that <laughs> the festivals are becoming endangered species you know because they're due to funding and everything else people are are really scared uh, what will happen 
but we have some new dates. I think uh, Klang Vokal Dortmund has new dates and then and, and some other uh, venues are also giving us new dates and festivals as well. So it will hopefully continue once we, we contain the, the, the pandemic. But also I, I do other things. I do a lot of education. I do some studio work and with some of those stuff I was, I was able to continue. And also I had this uh, big idea uh, for, a, for an educational project on Sevdah. And that was something I was about to do next winter after the tours, you know, when you, I was about to find a couple of months to, to do only that. Uh, like maybe a bit boring thing for, for, for general audience, but you know, scales, rhythms, harmonizations of the music, because I feel it was never properly done by musicians for musicians in, in this traditional music. It was usually done by musicologists and some, some, some other, other things. So that was something I was uh, about to do next year. And I'm just talking with some friends who I'm going to involve in this project that we're going to do it this, this summer, because I mean, 99.9% .9 it's the case that probably concerts and or performances will not happen before like September or October or whatever. So that's, that's what I'm going to do. You know, I'm going to do something I, like, like most of the people I know, uh, they had to reschedule and move some plans around, you know, and there's always something to do, you know, and what I'm really sad is that I see a lot of people uh, who are uh, on the beginning of their careers and, or who are still struggling, you know, to, to, to who are living in this gig economy, you know, who are still uh, living from one Friday to the next, you know, and their rent and their families and everything depends on that. I think they will be really hurt by this, you know, because uh, it's, 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 it's it's probably like that in 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 all the areas of of you know business and culture uh, people who are who are you know living from on 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 what they earn on weekly basis will be probably hurt the most and i already see many of them you know some of them moving back to their parents some of them you know trying to find other ways to 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 to, to tie loose ends and you know but and and we are all we all feel like i mean <laughs> we all feel like playing we want to play and i think one of the reasons for this whole digital thing is of course people are at home and, and there's maybe a bigger audience for some things than before because everyone is constantly on the internet but i also think there is a lot uh, there's a lot to do with just this urge you know when you're a performer you want to perform and if you don't have concerts and you're unable to do it, you know, uh, you know, I don't know, in whatever you play, cafe societies or arenas or whatever you play, uh, then you would do it online because you need this performance. Uh, it's it's a it's a need, not only a, a business decision whether you're going to do it or not. Yeah. So I think I haven't mentioned, but. Um there are comments coming in live and also I'm, I'm telling it to you dear audience that you can comment live uh, on facebook on youtube and it all we all get it somehow here on our surfaces and yeah, someone I can see comments yeah yeah hi, and someone... hi, Bila. hi people <laughs> <laughs> yeah there are a lot of highs coming in uh, yeah, yeah mainly which is which is nice uh, but also someone uh, apparently from Bosnia commented that we should expand uh, most activities to classical music, which reminded me to talk a bit about what those activities actually are. Um, uh, and also to say that unfortunately we can't expand it to classical music as of now. Uh, uh, I'd be glad if we, are, we can fulfill the initial mission and uh, work mainly with verdant folk uh, music uh, on the short term but uh, uh, mainly uh, three different calls for applications are closing this week at the end of this week so you still have time to apply and uh, one of them are for artists another one is for uh, professionals managers promoters uh, 
labels, um, anyone who, who wants to work with, uh, with music, uh, except, you know, actually playing on stage. Uh, and the third call for applications is for um, mainly for cities and local cultural policy makers. Uh, but you can find uh, out all about these applications on mostmusic.eu. So please go there after um, after this talk. And yeah, basically today we are talking about uh, creation, artists. Uh, um, on Wednesday, we'll talk about um, festivals and venues with uh, uh, the... Um, Ivan Petrovich from Exit Festival, Novi Sad, uh, and uh, also from uh, also with Goriana and um, Teika uh, from Password Productions uh, in Skopje, in another uh, big production company uh, in the region. Um, but um, and of course, um, song lines. Simon, you're also involved with most uh just like uh indeed just like, yeah just like us uh at hung Veto and the f quite a few more uh, few more participants like um uh, the exit festival the european capital of culture um in novi sad and timishara um fustanella festival from Eurocaster albania uh bozar from brussels uh Piranha, Vomex, uh, European Music Council. So it's it's quite a big coalition of players coming together and and um, and providing these programs uh, for mainly participants uh, Indeed, from the Balkans. One of the sorry, one of the plans is for Songlines to release uh, a sequence of CDs of artists from the Balkans with the magazine. And the first of those will be in the autumn this this year. So uh, one of the the jobs is to 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 decide on the the select the artist for those uh, for, for that CD later this year. And ideally, I, I mean, want to say a little bit about. Sorry, we keep speaking over each other. Um, I wanted to say a little bit about how um dynamic a lot of musicians have been in this in this um, crazy time and doing online concerts and yeah. uh, um i think when it works particularly when there's good sound sound quality that's the most important i think um you know it is a way of of people getting out there getting themselves known um the big question is earning a living from it. And a lot of people do free concerts, which is dangerous and is, is a slippery slope. And uh, um, I was very pleased to be part of a concert by a fantastic South African guitarist called Derek Gripper, which was a paid for concert. You bought the ticket online and you got a code and you uh, went to the concert. Now he did three concerts in it and, um, doing the maths he he must have earned several hundred dollars that day for those concerts and um there's a colleague of mine in 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 london who set up a, a platform for doing uh concerts on online uh, obviously you need to have decent um camera and equipment uh but it's called artistlockdown.com and there's a website and it's worth going you, you can details and some samples in there and then there's a um i i guess a selection process and whether they they feel you're eligible. anyway artist lockdown.com and i did see a week or week ago 10 days ago a really nice concert done from somebody's uh front room uh two musicians um worked really well have you uh, have you tried these lockdown concerts damir uh not yet but i will be playing uh 
I'm, I'm, I'm booked to play two of them in the next several weeks. And we'll see how it goes, you know. I mean, I started, when this whole thing started, I, I uh, recorded one song, then another, and I was just out of fun researching this Cafe Society rep repertoire that we have, so-called Narodnyatsi, or folk, folk music, you know, which is partially based on, on, on traditional music that I'm playing, and sometimes it's not, depends. And this music was always, you know, looked upon, because uh, as, as, you know, as kind of low life music and socially people didn't like it, et cetera, et cetera. And, but there were some beautiful songs in this whole repertoire. So I started, you know, recording and I think I recorded some 11, 12 of them. And it was really funny, you know, because, you know, people like, it's, it's, it's fun. I play my own versions that I used to play as a kid on, in parties, you know. Uh, and some, sometimes I change a lot of them in them, sometimes I don't. But uh, so I did that, I just like this with the phone without like really low, low, low resolution and stuff. But for these uh, live concerts, I will be probably, you know, going to uh, this one place where I really have good, good equipment, couple of great mics so I can really, you know, but it won't be they they won't be paid concerts like audience paying but the promoter who is doing that will will pay me and i will pay for free and to be honest i was debating a lot with some of my friends you know what is it you know i mean uh, for the last month like 99 percent of people were playing for free you know and now if you start charging for these live streams i mean you know people if they get something for free, sometimes they, uh, you know, uh, they will not pay or when when you and of course there there was also this this news from Facebook, you know, that they they also uh, introduced uh, several year, several days back. I, I saw that there's a news that Facebook wants to make it possible for people who have pages, like artists who have pages, to charge for live feeds, you know, and. And I was wondering, just knowing the business model, there might be that maybe in a couple of weeks they will not they will not be able to do these lives without audience audiences having to pay for them. You know, so uh, I have to be honest. But st still, again, take it or leave it, like it or not, it's still it's still not a concert. You know, it's still a digital event. And why? most of us are in love with music why we love music we love because it, we love it because of live music we want to go to concerts yeah, yeah. you know we want to hear the concerts live and also we want to 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 play the concerts live so i who knows maybe maybe this this whole huge stress on digital communication int internet I mean, it will definitely do something in our perception of internet, you know, in our perception of sharing the digital content of what is possible in the internet. You know, I'm teasing because I, I was giving a lot of interviews and then like announcements and you know, uh, everything for for the record. And when and I was I was just joking with a friend who is a journalist. I said, "Well, listen, now we also that we can come to your shows." through Skype, you know, so you will have really a hard time to get us into the studios in the future, you know, because now everything is, everybody's promoting through, through Skype and, you know, with a good connection, it can, you know, even be, even be really okay. So I think this, this whole, yeah, I mean, you know, us as humans, I mean, when you, when we see that something work, that something works, so who knows what will this bring in? Oh, in, in the future, but I definitely hope that uh, uh, once uh, th that it's possible that we are going to play concerts again, you know, even if maybe they will be slowly introduced as, you know, some kind of, you know, outdoor events, maybe this summer, you know, then maybe with some special restrictions for the audience or musicians, who knows, we'll see. Well, actually, I, I've never been really a fan of recorded concerts. Uh, somehow, for mm -hmm. me, a concert is about, you know, it's about the moment, seeing the music 
being born in the moment and also mm -hmm. about the phys physical vibration i mean yeah you have to be there in the same space where the music happens uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah of course if it, if it can't happen um uh, yeah. and also and also you know, the next best simon, thing yeah as simon said i mean if yeah there's no way that a sort of concert thing yeah of course i mean uh, also when you when you have uh, this when you have this uh, broadcasting aspect when you when you insert it then immediately you have to start thinking about production and then it's not a live event anymore even though you're doing it at this particular moment but then you have to think about mics about you know broadband connection about the room you're playing in uh blah 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 and then you realize that it's again production it's it's you know of course different to to live live concert production so yeah and the sound dropout in a concert is a different thing than a sound dropout in a talk like this yes <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's happening now uh <laughs> we've got a practical question uh in uh how the pandemic affects uh, the activities uh, of the project. And, well, the, the answer is, I think it's kind of obvious. It affects the project, of course, uh, as much as it affects um, everything else. So the programs that, uh, well, that require physical presence are postponed uh but whatever can be can be transferred uh to digital platforms we transfer that because we don't want to lose time and then then um and then be unmanageably busy uh, at later stages of the project so um we had to postpone some events already in april um uh, balkan traffic uh, in Brussels and events linked to Balkan traffic uh, in Brussels, uh, the festival exchange meeting, uh, which is kind of an exchange program in between festivals uh, from the Balkans and uh, the rest of Europe. Uh, and um, probably some of the training programs coming up in September uh, will be done digitally, but we'll um we don't know yet we can't really plan ahead that far as of now we'll but we'll flexibly adjust the plans as the pandemic uh expands or withdraws but hopefully the latter yeah i think that's uh, the most important thing because nobody can tell you anything you know if, if, even if we know that it's a problem that it's a pandemic it's a crisis but if we would you know but the thing is that even short-term or long-term planning are really crazy for everyone in all the fields you we just don't know what will happen in, in october you know and that's those are the talks rock and i my manager rock and i had with with so many promoters i mean they say okay we we want you to <laughs> we want to give you another date if nothing to have something to cancel <laughs> if, if 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 you would need to cancel you know because nobody can tell you maybe maybe and that's probably the, the worst thing if you if you're planning everything life uh business everything and without any strict uh you know data or or or, or parameters yeah um well so we'll see about what is sure that that the program is happening right now and it will happen uh as planned with some well minor or bigger adjustments let's i, I hope for the minor option um but uh, make sure to apply until the end of this week uh so you can participate in whatever form it will happen but uh right now i think we are getting a bit more hopeful that that the autumn in the autumn, well, physical events, physical gatherings can happen. As for example, Vomex in Budapest in October, we are planning for that as um, as usual. 
Uh, we really hope that a lot of uh, participants from the Balkans will come because it's it's uh, it's much closer, it's much more accessible from the region. Uh, so that would be a very nice occasion to to restart uh, restart the industry to re meet each other again. Uh, um, yeah, so that's uh, long, in the second half of October. Uh, you can check out the dates, but uh, we can meet you there. But yeah, but first apply. Uh, most music that EU is the place where you can find uh, the calls for applications. And somebody asked about the target countries, because yeah, I, I know it's a bit confusing. I always say Balkans, but uh, Balkans uh, can mean different things for different people. So in the framework of this program, the Balkan includes nine countries, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia, Montenegro, Kosovo, Macedonia, Albania, Romania, Bulgaria. Um, so this is the target area uh, of this program. So we expect applicants uh, for all three programs that are open right now uh, from these countries. Okay. Simon, Damir, anything else you'd like to share? Because we promised to be informal and we were so informal that we are way past the 20 minutes. We promised. <laughs> but uh, but if, if you have anything else to share, then go ahead. Okay. Simon? Uh, <laughs> Okay, I suppose then it's it it's time to wrap up our talk. Uh, okay, yeah, it's kind of confusing. I uh, we have a delay. Okay, now it's good. Sorry, yeah. uh, what what did you say, Balash? I didn't hear the last thing. Um, do you think we can have a song from you, Damir? As a closing. Uh, uh, of course, which one? I mean, how do you mean to, 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 to share a link or I can... I don't know, can we play one uh, from our computers or can you play one live? Uh, uh, no, well, cannot play it. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, uh, I didn't want can... to... No, I, I didn't want to put surprise. you in a... <laughs> like, No, oh. I didn't want to put you in an awkward situation. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't do my hair. You know, I have to do my hair when I perform. You know, as divas, we have to. Yeah, have yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't yeah, do yeah. that. <laughs> you never play without makeup. I'm sure. No, of course. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. I mean, I hope uh, we're gonna pull through soon, and things are going to come go back to normal. Yeah, uh, I thank you, Simon. Damir, and uh, we'll have another talk on Wednesday, 11 a.m. Uh, with Goriana Jordanovska and Tekla Vasilevich from Password Production in Skopje and Ivan Petrovich uh, from Exit Festival in Novi Sad. Then we'll discuss um, well, the festival side of life, a, a festival last summer, as it seems now. Mm. And now you can find a link at the bottom of the monitor to the feature about your record in Songlines, I guess. Nice, I hope I thank I, you. I hope I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice to see you guys and goodbye to everyone. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you, Damir. Thank you, Simon. Thank you. Yeah, all. very nice to see you. See you, keep, Simon. Keep well, keep happy, and See you soon. See you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>